Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have something very special. We're going to do an interview. I love to do interviews. We're going to do an interview of Harold Jordan. Please welcome Harold Jordan. How are you doing today? Yeah, so I'm I'm okay. I'm I'm not as well as I would like to, but I'll get there one day is what I always say. Um, as of lately, I've been doing a lot of hustling and bustling and studying Kevin O'Leary, the uh, the multimillionaire from Shark Tank. Um, studying some or reading some of his books, and um, I was actually just on the phone today with um, one of the local TV networks, uh, WCB Channel 2 News. And they were just, they called me and they were expressing their interest in broadcasting my film on their network in July. Kidding. Yes. It's but fantastic. The challenge, yeah, but the challenge is, uh, so you have to bid on the time slot and the date. Uh, but the, cl the closing time for the bid is tomorrow evening. Great. I'm always interested in how people got their start doing magic. What was it that sparked your interest? How did you get started? Can you walk us through that? Absolutely. So where I, my, the start that I got in magic is a little foggy because there's, there's separate instances where I gained uh, inspiration. So as far back as I can remember, I was in middle school and I had a computer class teacher and she was doing this magic trick. Uh, she was doing a card trick to us where she would hold the deck almost like in a uh, in biddle grip position. I think it's biddle grip, deck grip, one of the two. Well, she was holding it in this position and she would go through the pack she would like uh, almost like riffle the cards backwards and she would just say, tell me when to stop. And we tell her stop and boom, she just shows us the card. She says, look at it, memorize it, don't tell me it. She puts it back down on the deck and she, immediately she's like three of spades. Oh my God, how do you do that? And so for months, she just baffled us with this card trick. And so finally I was like, hey, Ms. Talaferro, can you show us this trick? And she was like, well, if you guys are good for a full week, I'll show it to you. And so, man, we, made, <laughs> every time we went in class, we made sure we were angels because we wanted to know how this trick was done. And finally, she taught us the trick and I was just blown away at how simple it was and this was more than 10 years ago. And don't you know, I still use that trick to like almost in any, matter of fact, I just used it today. I just used it today. Um, so there was that instance. And then my mother uh, and my father showed me uh, some David Blaine and Chris Angel videos online. And it was just the most amazing thing I had ever seen. And it inspired me to want to learn magic. And I had learned the uh, disappearing toothpick where you, you know, you do like this and it vanishes from your finger. And it, <laughs> it was the most, um, she was like, whoa, hold up. What did you just do? And she made me like turn the back of my hand. And she's like, oh, but so yeah, it, when I started magic, it was probably about, I would say roughly the early 2013. Yeah, roughly 2013 was where I officially begun magic. So when did you see the teacher present? Was that 2013 or was that before? That I want to say that was way before, like okay. maybe 2010. Okay. So 2010, you get this teacher and that's the first time you saw magic? Yes, that was the yeah. first time I've ever seen that. Well, no, yeah. not even the first time seeing magic. Um, so it, even further, when I was a kid, because um, I, I, I lived with my grandmother in North Charleston, South Carolina, and we lived 
And so I had a friend, well, I have a friend that I grew up with. Um, and he had actually did the Baldici levitation on me. He did, he showed that to me. He did it, he would do it to me all the time. Did he get you with it? He would get he would get me with it every single time. <laughs> every time he would baffle me. I'm like, he can levitate. He can levitate. And I was probably like maybe seven or eight years old. And he he would do that. He had another trick. Uh, my friend did, he would do this other trick where he would balance a soda can on the bottom edge, but I could never figure out how he would do it. Um, and finally he taught me how to do that. He would make a penny disappear. Uh, he had this thing where he would drink, uh, you know, the juices that come in the wax bottles. It's like plastic, but it's uh, I coated. remember those, yeah. Yeah. Can and he would drink stick. it. Yes, yes, they because they were very nasty. Yeah. But he would he would sip, he would like basically squirt it into his mouth. And I could clearly see that he was squirting the drink in his mouth, but it always seemed like it would never diminish in the bottle. So I'm like, how is he doing that? And he never taught me, never taught me. Cool. Very cool. So the first professional magicians you saw were Chris Angel and David Blank. Yes, they were. Yeah, they were the they were the first professional magicians that I had ever seen. Would you say that those are the primary influences on you? I would say yes, they are the they are the primarily influ the primary influences because I had never actually started learning magic until I saw them. Okay. What about other influences, other performers you've seen that inspired you? Uh, you being, you definitely being one. Thank uh, you. You actually, yes, sir. You inspired me to want to learn or to learn magic more from books. And that's actually kind of the, 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 the scope of your channel is that you promote reading mag or learning magic from books and researching from books. So uh, if you ever wanted to know whether or not it's working, trust me, at least it worked for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's fantastic. I appreciate that. I appreciate yes, it. So I, I wanted to make sure I told you that. Um, so yeah, you, um, oh man, uh, another, a, a, a school teacher, another school teacher I had uh, his name was Mr. John Jones. I'll never forget him. I still kind of text him every now and again on Facebook, but he had actually started teaching me the quote, somewhat the psychological subtleties involved with magic, more the psychological side rather than just tricks. And he had this, he, he would show me this thing with a quarter where he would toss it up like this in the air. And then finally he would do like this, but he would hold it in his hand. And I, where did it go? And he's like, it's still in my hand, but you see the psychology with it is that I started training your mind to always getting used to the, the coin going upward. And finally, when you know I kept it in my hand, um, it almost made you think that it had vanished. So it was kind of a psychological thing. And then he had also showed me Keith Berry, the mentalist, um, the TED Talk, Keith Berry's TED Talk, he had showed me Leonard Green's TED Talk, which was, I still watch it to this day. And I, I, yeah, I don't even want to get on that. Um, and then he had also introduced me to Penn and Teller. And watching them and Leonard Green and Keith Berry, they were some very influential people. And my, and Mr. Jones had actually given me my first magic books. Um, they were, the um, Houdini, uh, Houdini Secrets to Magic and Houdini's uh, Escapes. It's a red, there's a red, there's an orange book and a green one. Uh, it was written by his good friend, uh, Mr. I think his last name is Mr. Gibson. Walter Gibson. Yes. Walter, Walter Gibson. Gibson. I think yes, he's sir. written 90% of everything that's out there. He's a very prolific writer. Wow. I did, yeah. a, I did a video on him. 
if, if you haven't seen that, scroll down, take a look. Uh, Walter Gibson is extremely prolific and he's, his influence is, is, is tremendous. Amazing. So, so that's your history. Now, where do you see yourself going? What are your goals as a performer? Um, it's really hard to say because, I mean, ultimately, it's okay. Ultimate goals are good goals. Yeah. Ultimately, I would love to, I want magic to be my lifelong career. I want to die doing magic. Uh, that's my ultimate thing. And what I mean by die doing magic, I don't, I'm not necessarily saying that, hey, I'm going to put myself in a block of ice for three days and hope I kill myself. But I mean, I definitely plan on doing some, some pretty bizarre stuff in the future. But um ultimately i want magic to be my lifelong career i want that to be the it for me you know i want to dedicate my life to magic um and you know be able to just set on a path of constant learning uh constantly performing no matter where i go no matter where i'm at um yeah that's that's what i see myself in magic now, how I'm going to get there, I'm not sure yet. Right. I'm just kind of taking it as I go because, you know, it's it's just really, okay. When so I see an a lot of times I think to myself when opportunities come up, I always think like after, after I'm able to take advantage of this opportunity, where exactly am I going to go from there? And sometimes it's really hard to say because when it comes to being a magician, you know, there's no, there's no one blueprint on what to do. It's just really, you start doing magic and you, people kind of take notice of it and you just kind of go along for the ride almost seems like. So, and of, and of course you give yourself a sense of direction in the meantime, but it seems like for the most part, at least for me, um, it's kind of me just going along for the ride and for lack of a better term, you know, just kind of getting in where it is that I can or fitting in, fitting in wherever it is that I can fit in. Now, you reached out to me and, and your question initially was, can you do some consulting with me on this project? And then I took a look at two videos. I saw your promotional project. And by the way, I, I'll um, I'll put those links down below once once we once we publish this interview. I'll put those links down there. Uh, but I also looked at the longer version. I love them both. I, I love them both. And what I what I was most impressed with was your personality and your personal warmth and the way the audience is responding to you and reacting to you. I thought that was fantastic. And I also appreciated that the video seemed to focus on that audience reaction. Is that to other audience members, to laymen, if I can use the term, they wanna see that, that's important to them. How are other people responding? How do they feel? And uh, I thought they were excellent videos. So I, I'm anxious to see more, I really am. They, I'm, I'm anxious myself. <laughs> I really appreciate that. And, and with that, um, so now that kind of brings me, in, it kind of opens up the door to, to describe the, the, the objective or the concept of the film. So the film is called Magic in Somerville. And the, the I guess the, the sub headline for the film is, does magic have residency in this town's pop culture and the town being Somerville, South Carolina. And the, the concept behind the film is whether or not magic has a residency or relevancy in the town's pop culture, the town being Somerville, South Carolina. And the reason why is because if you ever, if you ever get to experience Somerville, Somerville is a very uh, historically based community. And because of it, they're a little bit, Somerville is a little, um, uh, it, 
they're they're set in their ways as far as the culture goes. <laughs> That's the best way I can explain it. They're very set in their way on what they embrace in the culture. And so now here it is, this guy out of nowhere talking about he wants to do magic and perform magic all around Somerville. Um, and so, you know, a lot of people, they're not used to seeing a magician in everyday society. It's not a common thing, at least not where I'm from. Um, it's not a very common thing. And so now it's me, it's, it's showing me aiming to integrate myself into the cultural community of Somerville, introducing magic to the people. Um, yeah, that's essentially what the film is all about. So what, so what people, I guess what I would give the expectancy of everyone in the film is they're going to get a look into what the town of Somerville is all about. You know, they get introduced to the people, the culture, uh, the community, and and they see how magic is being introduced to the to the community. Magic in Somerville. I think it's a great project. Yes, sir. Do you I have a Do you have a period of time that you're working on it, and you're expecting to finish this project? Yes. Yeah, so the project will is anticipated to premiere July the 9th of this year. And we've already put out the trailer on my YouTube channel. And pretty soon we're gonna be doing some videos to kind of continue the promotion of the film as far as uh, giving some sneak peeks into the film and doing some highlights and um, yeah. So, but the film itself will be premiering July the 9th. No, it will be pre premiering July the 9th. Uh, that is the date. And that's when it will be. What are and, you envisioning in terms of, uh, is it going to be a feature length film, which would be about 90 minutes? Is it going to be a short film, which maybe be 30 minutes or 40 minutes? Or what, what are you thinking? Yeah, so it will primarily be a short film. Uh, it'll fit right in that category. It, I want to keep it right around 45 minutes to an hour, um, if need be. No more than an hour, though, uh, because yeah yeah no more than an hour great well i'm looking forward to it. it's a great project great project yes sir i appreciate that <laughs> Couple, I'm, I'm honestly ready to hurry up and get it over with <laughs> uh couple more questions here you you said you had military service can you tell us a little bit about the military service oh yes absolutely so I went into the Air Force uh, December 1st, 2015, right after I graduated high school. I was 18 years old, I'm 24 now. Uh, got out of the Air Force April 19th, 2018. I remember those dates well because I've had to put them on so many different applications <laughs> that it's impossible for me to forget it. Um, and I was stationed in Ramstein, Germany as my duty station. I was a aircraft support technician. Um, I went to basic training in San Antonio, Texas for seven weeks. Well, it was, uh, and then after I went, after I left tech school, went to, or after I left basic training, went to tech school in Wichita Falls, Texas. That was amazing. Uh, I, lot of, I met a lot of awesome people, uh, had a lot of amazing experiences, and I, yeah, if I could do it over again, I probably would. You might, you might, you you might enjoy this, this story. I was at Andrews Air Force Base, and there was an air show there, and there was a um, stealth bomber, and it had, a, <clears throat> it had red ropes around it, but it was just sitting there. So I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what the cockpit looks like. So I know. So I'm climbing up to see what the cockpit looks like. And I, I feel this tug on my belt. And this guy says, where are you going? And I look down and it's an MP. You know, he's got a hold of my belt and he's pulling me down. I said, well, I thought I'd go up and take a look. He said, 
when you get stars on your shoulder, you go up and take a look. Otherwise, get behind that line. <laughs> right. Right. That's exactly how that goes. That's exactly how that goes. You do not want to run into MP. Oh, my God. By the way, for the viewers, MP stands for military police. Yes. Yeah. Military you know? police. So that, yeah. that was a good day. Well, listen, so if somebody watching this would like to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do that? If they want to get in touch with me, I will say the primary way, because I check my email about 300 times a day, uh, would be go through my website and email me, um, reserve at heraldjordanmagic.com. Um, and I'm pretty sure my phone number is floating around somewhere on on the internet. I don't mind giving it out. Uh, and then also my social media, uh, Instagram uh, is uh, underscore Harold Jordan. And then my Facebook as well, Harold Jordan. Um, you can't miss me. I'm the only pro, I'm the coolest profile on all of Facebook. So. Now your website is haroldjordanmagic.com? Yes, sir. And you have a contact page there? Yes. I assume great, great. All right. Well, and listen. They see all the information for the film as well, because I, I revised my website strictly for the film. So, so the to... film is July 9th, and you're going to premiere it on the on your YouTube channel. Correct. Fantastic. Amongst, yeah, amongst a, a, amongst a few other uh, potential platforms, but primarily on on YouTube on my YouTube channel. Good. 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 Anything else you want to add here? Um, I'm definitely anticipating as if, if as long as this film goes well, um, and I. I'm honestly very uh, skeptical about releasing it um, solely because, or a little insecure about releasing it because I'm just not certain on how it would be received from uh, the magic community. Um, not, and I'm not necessarily expecting any sort of ridicule or, you know, people necessarily talking bad about me or the film. It's just, you know, I'm not on the level of David Delman and David Blaine and Chris Stengel. You know, I don't have that kind of budget. You know, you know I, um, I, first of all, I've seen your work and it is exceptionally good. I, I would compare it to any professional filmmaker. It's that good. Uh, so I, I wouldn't be too concerned about that, but you know, I, I did a, I had the privilege of doing a speech on Monday night this week at, at one of the public libraries here. It was on, the title of the speech was, how to deliver a speech when you're too nervous to speak. And people came out to see that, that were interested in public speaking, but they have trouble with nervousness, like everybody does. I mean, it's, it's almost universal. But one of the things we got into was this, uh, this, this topic called imposter syndrome. It's a it's a common feeling that yes. that you're treading in waters. Somebody's going to find out you're an imposter and expose you. And all performers feel that to some extent. You people feel it in business. They get a new job or they get a new promotion. And they forget everything they've done prior. They forget their qualifications. They forget that actually they are quite good. And, and they allow that feeling to, to, uh, to inhibit their performance a little bit. But, but no, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I've, I've seen your work, it's terrific work. Uh, I think it's gonna be a major contribution. So uh, appreciate what you're doing. Yes, sir. <laughs> contribution is the right word. Um, that's kind of my goal is I, this, this film is a start to me, it's it's kind of also even though it's for it's for Somerville, it also is my way of winking at the magic community. Like, hey, I see you guys, you know. Like, it's it's yeah, it's just kind of that subtle subliminal wink at magicians, because you know everything that I learn and I understand and I know about magic comes from magicians, and sometimes what I I guess, how do I put it? When I've watched magic on TV and 
films and things like that, I have a I have a hard time seeing is there is there that does it have that wink to magicians? Like, for example, um, I, I wanted to do a, 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 a sequence of Chop by Craig Petty. I wanted to do a, 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 um, a couple clips of me performing that in the film, just as a wink towards Craig, like, hey, I, you know, I'm rocking with Chop. You know, uh, even after talking with Michael O'Brien, I was like, hey, is, you know, do, do you have any uh, products that I could perform in the film? And he was like, dude, you can pick any one you want, just perform it best as you can. And yeah. so that would just kind of be my wink at him, like, hey, I'm rocking with you as well. So it's just- Michael O'Brien, he's got his own YouTube channel, doesn't he? And it's pretty popular. Yes, yes, yeah. he sure does. And I think, I think he did a Penguin Lecture that's pretty good. Yeah, he did. It was very recent. I think it was this year, a few months back. Yeah. Um, I want to, and see, and that's the thing. It's like, I want to be able to, through the film, I want to, I want to tell magicians, hey, I identify with you. You know, I am, I'm not, I'm not this superstar. I, I, I mean, hey, if I'm, I'm if I'm a superstar one day, <laughs> great, but but ultimately it's like I'm a fellow magician and I'm I'm showing that my identif my identification is with you guys. So awesome. Good yeah, stuff. Sir. Good stuff. Well, Harold, thank you so much. Appreciate the interview. Hey, I thank you, sir. I thank you. I really appreciate the interview as well. I want to learn more about you because you're you're somewhat of an enigma to me. What would you uh, like to <laughs> Well, what so what type of magic do you primarily uh cite or cater to? I my my preference is doing events for adult communities. That it might be a company picnic. It might be an awards banquet. It might be uh, might be a retirement center. It might be um, sometimes there are there are like there there was a centennial event recently that I did. So, uh, but but that's that's my primary audience. That's what I go after, as opposed to kid shows or restaurant work. I think the the benefit of restaurant work, a residency. Is, it's called, is that you get a lot of exposure when you do a residency. Um, but I do a lot of cold calling and networking, but that's, that's what I do. And an advantage that I have is that I have 28 years in human resource management. I'm a highly credentialed, highly educated human resource professional. I was just talking about networking strategies the other day with a colleague. And I said, the first thing I try to do when I go into a networking event is, is be of service. How can I be of service? Because if I'm of service, that person's going to remember me and remember what I do, regardless of what the service is. And almost invariably, especially when you're talking about chamber events, because they tend to attract smaller businesses. If you have a business, you have 500 employees, you don't need human resource advice. But if you have five employees or four or 10, you, you don't have a human resource department. Yes. So, so people will ask me invariably, they'll ask me questions about human resources or human resource related subjects. We get into conversations about that. They know I'm a magician. I do good work for them in HR matters, and then they use me in, in magical matters. So wow. that's that's kind of how I do business. And it's really a unique approach that obviously it wouldn't be right for everybody. Uh, this, this past uh, spring, I, I attend, in order to maintain your credentials, you have to maintain a certain number of credits. And they have uh, two very large conventions every year. 
And I sponsored, uh, I was one of many sponsors at one of these human resource events. And I, I, I pitched the table. It had my banner on it, David Delman Magic. And people came over, I did magic for them all day long. And it was so popular, the MC, the guy who was emceeing, who was a professional comedian, said, you got to go over it. Now, people pay extra to get a shout out from the platform. I didn't pay extra for that. The guy just did it because he liked my magic. Right. So I was sending people over to my table. I got, I got 36 hot leads out of that day. Now, there were several hundred people there, but when I say a hot lead, I mean people came over, introduced themselves, and told me to get in touch with them because they have a gig. So, uh, so it was a very important event. Do you ever find yourself getting exhausted from performing at all? No, I don't. I don't. I, I tell you what, I, I, do, I do struggle. I do struggle with stage fright. That's why I did a speech on it. Uh, so prior to the event, uh, it's unfortunate, but prior to an event, I have difficulty concentrating. Like I would love, I had, I had an event, I think two days ago, and I would love to have been making sales calls throughout the course of the day and not lose the whole day. But really I lost the whole day because I couldn't focus or concentrate. But after the event, after the event, I was stoked. You know, I had enough energy to go all night. I was stoked. I mean, that always happens invariably. I, I get I get energized from performing. But prior to the event, invariably, no matter how many I do, and I've been doing this since I was eight, you know, no matter how many I do, I I, I still have that that pre-show jitter that uh, just just. Uh, interferes with concentration. Yes, I deal with that a lot as well. Um, usually sometimes when I get to a walk around, when I get to a walk around gig, um, I have to sometimes like, sometimes my wife will be with me and she'll say, babe, why are you not, why are you not going out to perform? I'm like, I gotta get my, I gotta get my, my jitters out real. And I have to kind of muster up the boldness to go up to people and feel out the room because I don't want to just start walking up to folks and invade on their conversation. And, you know, I'm at a bad time. Like, I, I remember I was working in a restaurant and I walked up to some folks. Hey, how you doing? I uh, wanted to come and show you guys some magic. And the ladies at the magic. table. And be before I could realize it, or once I realized it, this lady's at the table bawling out her eyes crying and i'm like "Ooh, uh i think i'll come back on that yeah and i just left the table yeah i think the, the hardest the hardest part of walk around is the first table yeah it is <laughs> once you've done the first table you're fine after that but yeah after that it's totally good yeah it's, all right cool i'm done now yeah. i broke the ice all right Thank you so much, Harold. Appreciate uh, appreciate your being here. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me as well. Um, and as far as, um, well, so yes, just to kind of wrap up things, guys, remember Magic in Somerville is the film. Uh, it will be premiering on July the 9th on my YouTube channel, Harold Jordan. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, underscore, underscore Harold Jordan and Facebook. Harold Jordan, my website, www.haroldjordanmagic.com. You can't miss it. Harold Jordan, basically everything. So. You want to nice meeting you here in the video chat. Yes, sir. You as well. You have a good evening. You also. Take care. All righty.